Okay, um, hello everyone. Okay, so we've been talking about strings, right? Now, we mentioned that a string is an object. And we also talked about the fact that a string object, right, is created from what's called a string class, which is basically code, okay, a bunch of code that the, the people who developed Java put together, okay? And basically, out of that code, you know, we can, that, that code helps us create a, uh, basically string object now the the string class which is basically code that the people uh, who uh, developed java wrote is part of what uh, a larger a larger uh, basically larger block of code which which is called the java api okay the java api is just think of it as lots of code okay that the people who developed java de uh, basically designed you know and the code in there allows us to do you know extra th extra stuff and so the string class is part of that Java API. And out of the string class, we can create string objects. Now, remember we talked about the fact that string the string class has, or basically specifies, okay, the kind of information that an object can have, all right? And then the kind, the kind of things that it can do. Basically, it has methods, right, that we can apply on the string object. So a string object basically has information about itself, and it can do extra stuff. It, it, you know, it, we can perform operations on them, right? So over here, I'm going to declare a string variable, right? I need to specify the type by, first of all, typing the name of the string class. And I'm going to declare, declare a variable, okay, that's going to hold a string object. And so I'll call it, for example, full, full name. Okay, this is just a name I came up with. And so what I've done over here is, well, I need my semicolon, right? What I've done over here is I have declared a variable that is in the future, okay, I haven't initialized it yet. In the future, it's going to hold a string object, right? Okay, so I'm going to initialize it with a string object, right? Remember, a string is basically a bunch of characters, right? Well, let, let me type my full name, my full name. A bunch of a bunch of characters, okay, that are wrapped up with double quotations. That is a string object. So over here, I have a string object, which is really just a string, right? But if, if it's surrounded by double quotations, then it's a string object. So when you do this, you've created a string object in memory. If you initialize it to a variable that we designed to store a string object, what is what's going to happen is you are assigning the memory location, the location, the address of where this string object is, is stored in memory. You're assigning it, they're assigning the memory address to this variable that we designed, okay, or we declared to hold a string object. So this variable now points to the string object. Okay. All right, now we, we talked about the, the fact that the string class, okay specifies the kind of information that a string object, okay, once we create a string object, uh, the string class basically specifies the, the kind of information that a string, uh, yeah, the kind of information that a string object can have. Also, it specifies the methods. Now, we haven't talked too deep, uh, we haven't gone too deep into, you know, details of methods, but we've, we, we have an overview of it. We have an idea of, of it. A method is basically one or more lines of code rubbed up together with curly braces, opening uh, and closing curly braces, surrounded with opening and, and closing curly braces, right? One or more lines of code th that are basically um, wrapped up with curly braces and given a name. And any time that name is used, right? The actual term for it is any time that name is called, which simply means any time it's used on the object, the, the series of lines of code, okay, they are executed. That's it. That's what a, a method is. And we'll talk more about methods, right? But in a string class, it specifies the kind of information that a string object can have and the kind of methods, uh, which are basically operations we can, we can perform on object. We, we talked about the fact that objects are special. They are not primitive data types, right? They, it's data, all right, but then they are special kind of data because they have information about themselves and then they have methods that we can, we can use to perform information on them. So you can think of them as having information and being able to kind of do stuff, right? Being able to um, uh, respond to operations that we, we, we perform on them. And so because, okay, it's an object, it has certain information about it. For example, it has 
the number of characters in this particular string object, right? We can count it. We can count one, two, three, four, four. But the thing is, it's special. It knows that already. When we declare a string object, it knows that, right? And it has methods that you know we can perform. We can perform on these the, 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 basically the string object. We can ask it. We can ask it to tell us. Okay, if we can say that if it knows the number of characters in itself, then we can ask it to tell us by using some of the methods, right? And so the way you'd apply a method, for example, on this string, right? Now we know this variable points to, okay, it holds the location, the address of this string object. It points to the string object. So the way we apply a method on the string object, okay, simply is we refer to the name of the variable, full name. We know this is the variable that points to the string object. It holds the memory, addre memory address. When we use this, we are actually referring to the string object, okay, that's stored in memory. So the way we apply a method to this uh, string object, the string object here, right, using this name, right, is we first of all type in the name of the variable, the class type variable, class type because this, okay, was created, this variable, this variable was created of, of the string, basically of type string, right, it has a string type, okay, it was created to, to hold an object which is going to, which is created from the string class, so that's why it's a class type variable, okay. So full name, the way we apply a method to this string object is we type in the name of the, the, the variable, the class type variable, and we use a dot, okay? A dot, this is what people call it the dot operator or, or, or the access operator. Th think of it as you, are, you, are, you, are, you want to gain access to something, right? And so you type in the dot operator, I'll get into more details of that, and then you use one of the methods. One of the methods, okay, that's the people who designed the class, okay, um, the string class. Uh, basically, one of the methods that one of the people designed in the string class is called length, right? And I'm going to type in this opening parentheses and closing parentheses, and then I'm going to terminate it, okay? So remember I said that a method is basically one or more lines of code rubbed up together with curly braces, right, and given a name. And anytime you call that name, over here, what I have done is I have called the name of the method called length in the string class. I have called it, right? And when you call it, you just, all it means is you're just using the name. You're just stating the name here, right? These two parentheses, right, means that, okay, anytime they, des they design a, a method, right, anytime they design a method, the method can ex accept extra information or not. It can, it, it can, you know, remember I, ta I talked about the fact that methods have a series of, um, sorry, basically it's a series of lines of code, right, wrapped up together. Those series of lines of code, you know, may require extra information for, for them to be used. Like they, they may require extra information to use to, to basically generate something, right? Or, or not. Methods may require extra information or not. Now th that extra information Okay, or those are basically the extra, extra information is known as arguments. Okay, if you have opening, opening, and opening and closing parentheses and there is nothing in here, right? There's nothing in here. It doesn't matter if I have a space. It doesn't matter. If there's nothing in here, that means that this method was, was designed in such a way that it doesn't require any extra information. It doesn't require any arguments. Now, we'll get into methods into detail. This is just for you to have an overview. The string class, this is how it works, and so it's, it's important to have an overview of it. Uh, now, but we'll definitely get into methods. So we use a name, which means that the series of lines of code that, that's wrapped up with curly braces, you know, of this basically method, is going to be execu executed. We have an opening parentheses and closing parentheses because this method doesn't require any extra information. Now, any method once you call it, once you use a name, okay, has to have opening and opening opening and closing curly braces. Opening and closing. Sorry, I said curly braces. Opening and closing parentheses and if there's nothing in the parentheses that means this method doesn't require any extra information or the actual term for it is it doesn't require any arguments now when you do this when you call the name of this method it's going to perform the lines of code in it right it's going to execute the lines of code stored in, in that method but like, uh, basically what this method does is right it returns the number of characters of this string it, it knows that the code, the series of lines of code stored in this length method, right, calculate or basically figure out the number of characters in the string and returns it. 
By returning, I mean it, it, basically, return, it, it basically returns it. it. It throws it back. Now, just imagine this. Okay, once you've, just imagine this. You are asking, you are, you are, you are basically saying this. Return to me the length of the full name string object. Return to me the length of this. And when you ask it that kind of question, when you write it this way, you're kind of asking a question, right? Or you're kind of telling it to do something. You're telling it to, to, to tell you the length or calculate the length of this string. And it's going to return it back to you. So think of it this way. You've asked it or you've told it to do that. It's returning the answer back to you. You need to do something with it or you need to store it somewhere. If you don't, nothing happens to it. Nothing happens. If we run this program right now, if we compile it and we run it, guess what? Nothing happens because we've asked it, all right, it's returning it, but we are not doing anything with the response. And so I can wrap this sta whole statement, system.out.println, with, with parentheses. I have asked it, uh, sorry, I've, I've asked it the length, okay, I've used this length method on this, this object, and basically the length figures out the, how many characters are in the string, and then returns it. So w imagine that it's re actually, it's really returning it, right? You can't see it, but then it's returning the number of characters. But because over here, right, because over here I have surrounded this whole statement here, I mean this whole line in parent in the system.out.println, we know that this system.out.println method, now it's also a method, it's called, it's basically called a println method, right, in the system class, but don't get too confused about that, but now we are seeing how, you know, methods, methods work, we are at least having an over overview, but definitely we'll get, we'll get into the details. So this is also a method, and anytime you give it an argument, remember that arg this whole th this whole thing now becomes an argument passed into into the parentheses. And when you pass this, so basically this print ln method requires extra information, right? Or not? If you it, ba it basically accepts in whatever you pass to it, and then it prints it out. That's its purpose. It prints out whatever you give to it. If you give it nothing, it prints out nothing. If you give it something, in this case full name dot length it prints out the full name dot length right so we know that this is returning something just think of it th th this way it's going to return something it, you know we are not seeing it right we're not seeing anything visual on the screen that is returning it but when you call a method methods sometimes return data if they don't return data then 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 find it then find it they don't return data not all methods return data but in this case the dot length method returns data and because that data is returned, okay, in the system.out.println statement. Whatever data is returned is going to be printed. Uh, is going to be printed. Now, I, I want this to be clear, and that's why I'm trying to expl explain, okay? So bear with me here. So when I compile this, oops, I have an error. So cannot find symbol method print ln. I think I, I typed it wrongly. Okay, so it's supposed to be print ln and not prnt. I missed an i here. Okay, compile this and run it. And now it says 24. So this method basically, okay, when, when applied to this string object, figures out how many characters are in this full name string object and tells us we can count it. One, two, three, four, five. Now the space is also considered as a character, right? Because it's surrounded with double quotations and therefore it's a character. It's a space and therefore it's a character. So that, that's also considered a character. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it knows that this method basically figures out how many characters are in the string and then it re it's returned. If we don't do anything to it, if we just use this in our code and we don't do anything to it, nothing happens. But because we have basically put this line of code into the system.out.println sta statement, <coughs> whatever is going, whatever is returned is going to be shown to us. It's going to be printed, right? So we'll see more about methods and basically how string works. But then I just wanted you to know that strings. Uh, this is how, for example, we apply, a, you know, a, a, met a method on a string. Strings have methods to, or, or methods that we can apply to them. They have information about them. Okay. Um, so. Over here, again, what this means is this. We are, we, are actually, we are basically applying the length method, okay, on this string. This is an access operator. We are gaining access, okay, into this string object, 
and then applying the length method, which basically figures out the number of characters in the string. Don't get too worried if you're not if it's not too clear with time you understand it. We'll get into method. We'll get into you know, uh, more on strings, and it will be clear. But just know that strings have uh, information about them. They have methods. And in the next video, I'll we'll talk about more methods um, of the of the string class, uh, and we'll see we'll see how they work. Right? Okay. So if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next video. All right then, bye-bye.